Okay, uh, welcome everybody uh, to this review video. Um, we're gonna be talking about entropy uh, or what Dr. Mortensen covered in lecture 34. Um, and my name's Derek Merkley, that's why that name's on the screen. So we'll get moving on that. So obviously a great place to start when talking about entropy is what, what is it? Um, and entropy is defined as a measure of how dispersed the energy of a, of a system is. Um, and for a lot of people, if you're like me, when you first hear that definition, you're probably like, okay, but uh, what does entropy mean? <laughs> so um, breaking it down further, um, entropy is often thought of and referred to just as disorder or chaos. Um, and the likelihood or how much so in a, a system moves towards that. Um, the second law of thermodynamics is linked to this. Um, and it states any spontaneous process increases disorder in the universe. And we'll talk um, a little bit more on that later, but basically what it's saying is that the universe is inclined to move towards chaos or more disorder rather than to naturally move towards organization. Um, it's just more natural to move that way. Um, but we'll, we'll look at some examples now just to kind of help you to uh, visualize it, kind of understand what that, what that really means. Um, so great first example is talking about our desks. Um, here's a nice little picture of a desk. I don't know if your desk looks as nice and organized as that does. Mine certainly doesn't. And that's because it's a good example of entropy because naturally our, our desks are gonna to move towards becoming more disorganized. It requires less effort, less energy um, to, rem to move towards disorganization. When we organize our desk, it requires more energy. And so it's not, it's not a natural thing. So entropy, um, it's just naturally, it measures how, how it flows towards disorganization and chaos. So you have your desk and naturally, it's gonna look more like that than it is gonna look like that first picture. Uh, another example of that is just your kitchen it requires energy and effort. It's not natural for a kitchen just to stay clean with everything that's going on in there it requires, it's, it's naturally gonna just become dirty and you're gonna to have to clean it again and that requires energy and effort. Um, and when you don't, it's naturally gonna end up looking like that, right? Nice and messy. And then another, a uh, good example is just kids. When, when you think about it, kids just naturally are a little bit disorganized. They're a little bit messy. They, you, you just never see a kid just naturally just cleaning for the heck of it, for the fun of it. It just doesn't naturally happen. They do it because their kids, their parents told them to. So we'll, we'll come back and, and use a couple of these examples a little further on to kind of explain a little bit more of entropy. Um, next up is, is the factors that influence entropy. Um, so first example of that, is, or one of the fact, first factor that influences entropy is the mass or number of atoms. Um, so a good way to think about it is you have little kids and they can cause a mess, right? Um, but when you're bigger and older, you have more access to things and it's a lot easier to make a, a bigger mess or worse mess, more, more disaster, more chaos, more disorder and not disaster. Um, so that's kind of a, an easy way to remember that one. Uh, next up is the molecular structure and shape. Um, I'm speaking like linearly. And what that means is um, the more linear that a molecule is, the more stretched out and, and, and thin that it is, um, the, the more entropy that it has, because it's more able to move around, there's a lot more bend in it, right? Um, a, a good example of that is just kids again. If, um, if they were holding hands in a long line, they're still able to move and bend and get to different places and do different things. And because of that, they're able to cause disorder, right? Or, or, or more chaos. But uh, if you were to, for example, duct tape the, the kids together, if they're playing at a friend's house and they just got duct taped together, because it's more compact, it, do, it doesn't move. There's not as much movement that's allowed. So because of that, it, it lowers the entropy. It lowers the, the chaos that can, that can come from that. 
So that, that's speaking linearly. And then rigidity is speaking more about like um, a phase, phase changes is the best way to kind of say it, like movement. So if it goes, so we know, we know that solids are, are tight and compact and the, the spaces between the molecules are so small that they don't move a whole lot. And so that lack of movement prevents the movement towards chaos or disorder. And so that, that's a lower state of en lower, lower entropy. But as you move from a solid to a liquid where they kind of have some movement in between the molecules and between the elements, um, that allows for more entropy. So because it can move a little bit more, uh, it has a, a greater entropy. And then if you, um, if you move from a, a liquid to a gas, it's the very same thing where now you have that little bit of movement. Now they're so spaced out, there's tons of, of the ability to move. And so that has a higher probability of disorder and chaos. I guess, I guess that's the best way to say it for a lot of these it is just is a higher probability to move towards disorder or chaos. Um, yeah. So you take away that little duct tape picture, but um, well, actually speaking more on that thing. So you have the, the, another influence is the number of atoms allowed to move freely. So what that means is back to that example of the kids with the duct tape and their duct tape together, even though there's a bunch of different parts, it's all stuck together in, in one um, solid thing, right? And so it can move together as a whole, but it's there's not a high probability of it causing a lot of chaos or anything like that. But when you take that duct tape away and it spreads out, there's a lot of different pieces, a lot of different kids are now separate parts. And the entropy increases because now they're all running around and they can all cause um, that that chaos and disorder. So um, that's the same thing with, with molecules. When you start, when you go from starting with a molecule that's together and then it separates into the different pieces that make it up, that's gonna uh, increase in entropy. Um, volume, a good example for this is um, at the beginning of the semester, I had a roommate, we, we shared a room and so he had his half of the room and I had my half and it was totally fine. We kept each side clean. Um, I was super organized. And then he moved out before the semester ended. And what I, what I noticed was the more space that I had now because he was gone, it just seemed like my room exploded. It wasn't because I got more stuff that caused all this disorder and chaos in this room, but it was just the more volume. So it's not so when the volume increases, it increases entropy, but it's not because there's more stuff. And so it's more chaotic. It's just more places for the stuff to go, a higher probability of that. And then uh, temperature has uh, an influence on entropy as well. I, I don't really have a great example or a visual for that, but just remember that uh, temperature has an effect on it as well. Um, so next, we're just gonna um, do it just like Dr. Mortensen does where we're gonna have kind of like a checkup, I, I quicker th quiz, quiz, excuse me, um, to go and over and make sure that you understand what, what's been discussed thus far. Um, so which uh, we're gonna ask, I, I think I have four different examples on this slide. So sh we're just gonna go over which of the following would have like a higher entropy based on, on what we previously discussed that last slide. Um, I'll go. Yeah, yeah, so if, if you need to review that, you can go back in the video. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll hop into it. I'll, you can pause to answer the questions and then come back and, and I'll walk everyone through each, each little bit why one has a higher entropy than the other. So the first one is you have a reaction where carbon uh, reacts with uh, oxygen gas and it creates carbon dioxide. Um, so you have that equation versus the, the reverse of that, where you have carbon dioxide that, that reacts and breaks down to carbon and, and oxygen gas. So take a second, pause, look at it if you need to, to figure out which one is going to have a higher entropy. Okay, um, now that you did that, it, the correct answer is the, the right option, because remember the example with the kids and the duct tape, when that you have that 
one big glob and then when it breaks it down into separate ones that can run around and, and, and cause chaos and destruction or whatever you want to call it, that it's higher in entropy. So it goes from one as the number of molecules able to run around and then it moves to two. So it's going to have a higher entropy. Uh, the next one is you have liquid water and then the reaction that causes it to become a gas um, or water in a gaseous state. And so compare that to go when water is in its gaseous state and it goes to the liquid state. So pause and look at that and try and figure out which one has a higher entropy. All right, so now that you've done that, if we think back um, about that last slide where it talked about phase changes. So when you go from a solid to a liquid or from a liquid to a gas, that's going to have a, a that's an increasing order of entropy. So when we go from a liquid water to water in a gaseous state, then that's I'm going to have a higher entropy. So the option on the left, water in the liquid, converts to water in a gaseous state, and um, that's going that's moving to a bigger state of chaos. Um, so this next one is um, just drawing. And you got to look at it and you got to decide which one has a higher entropy or more able to disperse itself. So pause and go ahead and look at that and decide that. Then you can press play when you're ready to get walked through it if you don't know. Okay, so um, kind of that, that principle of um, the the ability to move in linearly is is what it, the, what I was talking about on that last slide for the the kids holding hands versus getting duct taped together. Um, when they're holding hands, there's a lot of different ways that it can move and bend and everything like that. So it's a lot more linear and able to to move and and, and disperse. And so that left option has more of the ability to do that and move towards more disorder as opposed to the right where it's kind of just locked in there. Um, so it's going to be the left one for that one. And then the last one is comparing six moles of hydrogen gas in a two liter container, um, comparing that to six moles of hydrogen gas in a six liter container. So pause the video and, and compare those two and then come back when you're ready. Okay, so um, we talked about the, the example of, of me and my, my roommate. Once he left, once I had more volume, more space, more places to put things, that's when chaos and disorder ensued, right? So the example with the higher volume, the six liters is gonna uh, have the higher entropy. Um, so now moving on from that, if you have more questions, just review that last slide and um, check out Dr. Mortensen's lectures or YouTube or something, because that's all that I have for the kind of conceptual stuff, but not for the math of it, how to calculate entropy. Um, you have the, the change is by the entropy of the final minus the entropy of the initial. And it, it's super simple, super simple, super similar to enthalpy. It, it uses the same equation. Um, the only difference is that it uses an S, which somehow stands for Entropy, uh, there's just no S's in the word entropy, but somehow it stands for it. Scientists are smart, maybe that's where I, I don't know, you just gotta trust that they knew what they were doing, but um, that same same equation for finding the, the change in a reaction. So the, the delta S or the delta entropy of a reaction is gonna be the, the, the products minus the reactants. And then whatever moles there are, you're gonna multiply that in, but you're gonna add together all of the products and subtract all of the reactants from that. So we'll go through some practice problems. Um, you can pause it and run through it to make sure you got it. And then I'll, I'll walk through the answer after you've done that. So this problem is calculate the entropy for the following equation. You have um, solid copper that's gonna be going to copper in a gaseous state. So, um, and then after that you have the given entropy for copper in both its solid and gaseous states. So pause the video and do that real quick. Okay, so that's not rocket science, right? You, you just have one product and one reactant. So you just 
take the the product and, and subtract from it the reactant and there's no difference in moles so you don't have to do any multiplication or anything like that so it's just 166.4 minus 33.2 and you're going to get 133.2 joules um, per mole right there um, some more practice um, problems so you're going to calculate the change in entropy for the following equation same thing so you're going to have um, bromide going from its liquid state to its gaseous state. And then given for that, um, when it's in its liquid state, 152.2 joules is its entropy and then um, of formation. And then after that, you have the BR, the bromide as a gas, and then it's given 245.5 as its um, entropy of formation. So. Go ahead and pause the video and do that. Once again, it's pretty simple. Okay, so now you've done that. Once again, no difference in moles, no nothing, but you see that it goes from the liquid state to a gaseous state. Um, so it's the same thing. You just product this is 245.5. You're going to subtract from that the reactants, which is 152.2. And if you did your calculations, calculations correctly, you're going to get 93.3. And we know that's correct because when you go from a liquid to a gas, you're increasing the entropy, right? Because we're going from that kind of movement to now it's able to go all over the place, more disorder, more chaos. And so it's gonna be a positive number. If we had flipped that and it went from a gas to a liquid, then we would flip that equation as well. And you'd have 152.2 and you'd subtract 245.5, you'd get negative 93.3. And then you would know that there was a decrease in entropy in that process. So you, you can kind of check your answer conceptually to make sure because you, you, you know you're going from a liquid to a gas or a gas to a liquid, you know whether the answer should be positive or negative. All right, now that you're warmed up, time for a little bit more of a difficult problem, more, more moving parts, and then uh, also pay attention to the moles. Um, you need to factor that into the equation, but press pause and Go ahead and do that and press play when you're ready to, to move on from that. Okay, now that you're back, um, we'll, we'll walk through that equation. And if you got it, if you're sure about it, you can just check out the answer. And if you get it right, you can kind of skip when I'm walking through, but um, you're gonna, same equation, you're gonna products minus reactants and it's the sum of all the products times their moles minus the sum of all the reactants times their moles. So you're, you have CO2 and water, uh, CO2 and H2 are your, your products. And so there's eight moles of CO2. So you're gonna take the, you're gonna look at the joules per, joules per mole of CO2 is 213.8. There's eight moles of it, so 213.8 times eight. You're going to add that to the six moles of water, and water is 69.9, so multiply that by six. So you're going to sum all of that together, and then you're going to subtract from that sum um, the reactants. And there's four moles of C2H2, and that's 200.8 joules per mole. So you're going to multiply that one by four, and then you have... Um, 11 oxygens, uh, it looks like 110 too, but it's actually 11 oxygens. So you're gonna have oxygen, which is 205 joules per mole um, formation. And then you're gonna multiply that by 11, so 205 times 11, and you're gonna subtract that whole from the product whole. And you're, if you did your calculations correctly, you should come out to negative nine, 128.4 and that should make sense right it should be negative because you have a gas combining with a gas and it converts to a gas and a liquid so you have the gases moving all around and it converts to a gas but also a liquid that's closer and there's less movement less um, dispersion less um, moves to a state of less chaos and more order so if you have any questions on that, just review the math and you should be good. And now to finish, just a, a cool experiment that I found online that just shows kind of entropy in action. Hopefully you can hear it.
Mm-hmm. Wow. And there you go. There's your extra lecture on entropy. Hopefully that was helpful, guys.